What's up guys, this is Ryan Johnson with MoneyBass.com and today I'm just out here getting everything cleared out of my boat so I could take it in for a little maintenance. Just kind of getting everything prepared for the 2022 season. We do have our schedule and I'll be putting a video out on that shortly so you guys can see what lakes we'll be on next year and kind of um, get your feedback on what lakes you will be fishing. But for today, I just wanted to take a few minutes and kind of give my opinion, my reaction to a video that was released by Randy Blockett. Um, his channel is, uh, let's see, Intuitive Angling with Randy Blockett. Um, it's one of the, I would say, definitely check his videos out, guys. Um, Randy Blockett, um, Johnny with Fish the Moment, um, Tactical Bassin, Brian Latimer, um, Mark Daniels Jr., um, Kyle Welcher. Those are some of my um, top top video channels that I like to watch. And for me, I always look and try to learn new things from these guys. And Randy, to me, is one of the top guys as far as putting out just straight information and knowledge that you can only get with years of experience. So for me, um, in learning new things, it's kind of like sometimes you want to joust with someone that has more experience with you so that you can learn things from them and get new insights to different things. So today, the video that I saw was basically the title of it, and I will put this link down in the description so that you can watch it yourself, draw your own opinion, and also I would like to see what your viewpoint is on it. So please take a minute and um, leave a comment or something down in the um, comment section so we can kind of go back and forth and just share ideas and thoughts on this process of bass fishing as it you know continues to grow and new things are put in place and people's um just thoughts on that so um in this video basically he talks about um let me just pull this up real quick there was a tournament and let's see there was a tournament where an angler he used live scope and basically that is the um i guess the headline of it is, is that live scope was used and he caught a 36.90 five limit bag of smallmouth using a, um, I think it was a mega bass spark shaft. And so um, with Randy's video, what he was basically saying is that he isn't impressed by the way that they were caught because they were caught using live scope. And some of the things that he stated, um, let me just take a look real quick. One of the things that he stated is that he kind of compares that with um, using steroids in baseball back in the day. So for me, with that, from uh, from I just looked it up real quick. Steroids were illegal since 1991 in baseball. As of right now, live scope, live imaging, side imaging, using sonar, using your electronics. Um, and I would even say going back to using scents, rattles, different things that fishermen use to enhance their bait that may not necessarily be tied to actual fishing skill itself on the lake, all of those things to me can be brought into question. So as new things come out, there's going to always be, you know, that um, kind of tug of war between should that be allowed and shouldn't that be allowed. Whenever I first started bass fishing, I had no idea that there was a such thing as a graph. The first time that I heard about using, even having something called a fish finder, my first question was, is that allowed? Is that, is it, is that against the rules? So I learned about that. I learned about using scents on baits. I learned about different types of hooks, all kinds of things that as an amateur angler, just starting out, just sounded crazy. I always thought you just go to the lake with a rod, reel, and a bait, cast it out there, and and your skill was in just being able to catch a fish that way. So as you guys know, as your skill level increases, you see that that is definitely not the case. There are things that come into play with the types of hooks that you use, the type of line, the performance and flexibility of the different rods, the gear ratios of the reels, all of that stuff starts coming into play. So for me, whenever I'm looking at that and analyzing it, it's, it's like, what is it about one particular thing of those things that I just listed out makes one more of an advantage over the other? To me, the true test of skill would be everyone has to have the same rod, same line, same lure, same reel, exact same boat and everything to where they're on a completely equal playing field. And 
the reality of it is I don't think there's any sports like that. Even if you go to golf, for example, someone may have better clubs than the other one. If you go to track and field, someone's shoes may be better. They may wear a more aerodynamic uh, outfit or something like that. So unless everyone has the exact same equipment, then there's always going to be that kind of give and take as far as how much is that a skill. And even looking into it that way, I think it is a skill set to be able to learn how to use electronics. Because um, one of the things that people say and one of the things that he mentioned in the video is if you're fishing the smaller pot tournaments or smaller tournaments against people and someone shows up and they have live scope, you might as well just give them your money. And I disagree with that because I fished uh, smaller pot tournaments a lot and I fished against guys that had live imaging way before I received mine. As you guys know, um, if you've been following my channel, I just received mine maybe less than a month ago, I believe. So prior to that, I was using my 360 and I was fishing against those guys using my 360. And now that I have live imaging, I would say that it is harder because you have, well, you have to work harder um, to locate certain things with the 360 versus having live imaging, but it can be done. So there is amount of skill and there is amount of just knowledge of electronics and things like that whenever it comes to um, tournament fishing. Um, another thing that he had mentioned, let me take a look real quick, um, was basically the live scope, uh, like I said, the live scope being a game changer to the point where you might as well give your money to people and head home. I would say, ah, I don't necessarily agree with that. I will actually put a link in the description to one or two videos where um, I was able to use my 360 and um, outfished the guys that actually had live scope and I believe someone actually had active target um, things like that but like I said I just think that it is a thing that it really depends on that angler so for instance in my opinion just hearing the knowledge and everything from Randy Blockett I mean you could tell he really knows his stuff to me he reminds me of when you're growing up you may have your, your uncle your granddad or someone that has so much experience in certain things that they may say, well, hey, look over there. You see the cows, they're sitting down under the trees right now. So you know when those cows are sitting down, that means the fish are biting. And you're looking like, man, why, why is that? I don't understand. Well, you know, in nature, whenever animals, you know, whenever they're sitting down, that is a mood across the spectrum of the animal. I mean, it can get kind of deep. And a lot of times, guys, I mean, they're telling you things and you get out to the lake and you find out that they are true. So... For me, I would say that just having the live scope, to me, it is still impressive that that angler was able to go out there and catch those fish because even though he found them, he was able to go out there and put in work, which is something that I always talk about on the channel is putting in work to get the results that you want. Um, in the article that I read, um, I'll just tell you guys where it's at, um, on the fishing wire, um, the fishingwire.com. He basically stated that he was going out there two to three times per week and he was locating the fish in different depth ranges and things like that. And he was able to locate these fish on big boulders. And if you guys know about um, the 360 mega imaging, if you see some boulders, those boulders, you can almost count them on the screen whenever you see those. So just because they have the live scope, he can see the fish doesn't mean he's going to catch them. But the thing that he uh, specified is the way that he was catching those those fish. He was using, um, I think, three quarter ounce, three eighth ounce um, uh, swim bait with a spark shad on it. And he said he was barely crawling that across the bottom. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen how that actually looks and what it takes to crawl a bait down on the bottom in, in 20 to 30 feet deep. I mean, you're barely moving it. If you move it too fast, it's going to come, come back up into the water column but he was dragging that along the bottom. So how do you figure out that technique and what kind of patience does it take to be able to fish that? Um, I'll put a, another link to a video where a similar technique that I used using a spy bait and I was able to catch a nice fish doing, doing that. But as you watch, you can see my hand is barely moving. And when you know that you're gonna make one cast and that one cast may take two, three, four minutes, to get back to the boat and let's say if you don't have any fish it's still going to play tricks on your mind and make you think should i run shallow should i stay out here deep 
What should I do? So all of those type of things come into play. So those are just um, some thoughts that I had on it and my reaction to his video. Like I said, make sure you go and check out the link that will take you straight to the video for Randy Blockett, um, Intuitive Angling with Randy Blockett, a great channel, guys. Make sure you guys subscribe to that. Oh, and actually, make sure you subscribe to my channel and definitely hit the like button, guys. The channel is growing, and I really appreciate my loyal subscribers and all of the new guys that are continuing to come to the channel and watch the videos, subscribe, and participate in the comment section. All right, guys, that's it for now. I will be back again with another video, so make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one.